Welcome back to The Bass Tutor. My name is Tyler Fry and I'm The Bass Tutor. Today I wanted to go over my top five favorite springtime lures for fishing in clear water. You know earlier this week I made a video about how to catch them in muddy water in the springtime so if you'd like to look at that I'm going to link it down below in the description but if you're a guy that's going to fish predominantly clear water and you want to get a few extra bites this year then check out this uh, couple of recommendations I have and maybe you'll learn something and hopefully you'll be able to catch some more fish the next time you go out. So the first kind of category that I've set this up into is going to be kind of a windy category is what we'll call it. Whenever the wind's got that, or whenever the water's got that chop to it from the wind or it's got rain coming down on it, a lot of the times you're going to be able to entice these fish. But a lot of the times too, they're going to go and they're just going to suspend over cover. And that's where our good friend the jerkbait comes in. So coming in at the number one spot is going to be the jerkbait. Uh, by no means is it the best, but it is a phenomenal lure, especially catching the suspended fish. So if you're able to find the fish before they move up to their pre-spawn areas, I'm going to throw something like this Stacy 90. You know, typically those fish are going to be a little bit deeper and that bigger bill on this thing is going to get down there. You're going to be able to get it right in their face and they're going to just not be able to stand it. But if they've done moved up or they're on a little bit shallower cover, I'm going to throw something like one of these shallow diving jerk baits. So these things are going to go anywhere from probably two foot to four foot, just depending on uh, what kind of line you have. You can see they've got a lot smaller bill and they're not going to dive as deep, but they both play their key roles. And so the second bait in the windy or rainy category is a crankbait. You know, a lot of the lakes that I fish here, they're kind of deeper. They're highland reservoir type lakes. And so I'm going to throw something like this rock crawler or maybe a wiggle wart or even a bandit. You know, all of these have their own place. And so that's where I'm going to have to pick which one I want to throw. And you say, well, what about color selection? Well, when it comes to the crankbait, whenever it's sunny outside, I like to throw these more translucent patterns like on this rock crawler. You, I don't know if you guys can tell it or not, but this thing is translucent and it's got a real natural pattern to it. Whereas if it's uh, dark outside and it's overcast skies, I'm going to throw something like this natural pattern but it's not translucent. It's just a straight painted lure or maybe something like this wiggle wart. You see all of these baits have their own places. And so whenever it's sunny outside, I'm gonna to stick to more translucent baits in the clear water. And whenever it's overcast outside, I'm gonna throw something that's uh, darker. It's got a pattern to it. So let's move into calm days. Whenever it's calm outside or maybe just a slight chop to the water, I'm going to throw the swim bait. It's hard to beat a swim bait this time of year. I don't know how many times I've caught fish on them. And so these right here are both Kitex. You know, the Kitex has really taken the world by storm. Everybody's really made their own version of it. But it's because they work. There's just something about the action of them those fish can't stand. So if I'm fishing water that doesn't have a lot of chop or has no chop at all, and I'm trying to cover water and get down through there and pick up some fish, I'm going to throw this swim bait. But there's also another variation to this swim bait that I like to throw during this time of year, and that's the Alabama rig. If you can get away with throwing this thing, by all means, throw it. If you've got five options versus this one option, obviously it's going to help you to have more options. You know, depending on your state, figure out how many hooks you're allowed to throw. Here in Kentucky, we're allowed to throw five. I know in Tennessee, you're only allowed to throw three, so you just need to figure out how many you are allowed to throw. But even if you can, can't can throw five, you can still put on dummy rigs and make that look like a full school going through the water. So that's going to be definitely an option, either the single swim bait or the Alabama rig. So the fourth top bait on our list is going to be a swim jig. And I'm going to throw the swim jig whenever it's calm outside and I need to get through some thick cover. Say there's grass, say there's uh, some thick wood, stick ups, brush piles, whatever the case may be. I want to flip this thing around it or say you come up to some docks and you want to skip this under it. You have tons of options with the swim jig. You know, it's got the brush guard on it. You're going to be able to get it through cover and bring it back out without any problem. Just make sure if you're fishing this thing around heavy cover that you've got a thick line that you can get those fish out. So just keep that in mind. 
But either way, this thing is going to play a very key role in getting those springtime bites. And last but not least on the list is really a category in its own, and that's finesse fishing. And there's three types of baits that I keep tied on during the springtime whenever the water's clear. Number one favorite for me is probably the Ned Rig. Okay, this thing is going to catch smallmouth, it's going to catch largemouth, it's going to catch spotted bass. You know, the numbers are really endless on how many fish that you'll catch on this thing. It'll catch small fish and it'll catch big fish. But if I'm predominantly targeting big fish, that's when I'm going to step it up to the shaky head. Obviously, the Ned Rig will catch just as many big fish, but for some reason, I just feel like I get a lot more quality bites on the shaky head. And you know, the shaky head is really kind of a bait that people are kind of letting go by the wayside. Some people are throwing it, some people aren't. But for the guys that still throw it, that's good because it helps us out. And lastly on the list, it's going to be a finesse jig. You know, just about any time of year, the finesse jig is going to work. This time of year especially, you know, if you don't know the difference between a finesse jig and just a regular football head jig or a flipping jig, the finesse jig has a lot thinner diameter hook. You're not going to be throwing it on as heavy of a rod. You're not going to throw it on as heavy line. Typically, I'm going to throw this thing on 12-pound test fluorocarbon. That way, those fish don't have as likely of a chance to see it. And I can get it in there, bounce it around, and let them bite it. So all of these baits have their own place. They're all different tools in different times to the throw them. And the bass just prefer one over the other oftentimes. So you just got to experiment around. But I can guarantee you the next time you go fishing, if you have one of these baits on, more than likely you're going to catch a fish. So I hope you guys learned something today. And I hope you guys do good in your next fishing trip. And so we'll see you out on the water. And don't forget to wet a line. We'll see you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.